I'm rather surprised that it happened in my lifetime. I, I, I certainly had no idea that it would, would happen in my lifetime at the beginning uh, more than 40 years ago. Because at the beginning, people had no idea about where to look for it. So it's, it's really amazing for me that, that, to find out that it's, it's really enough, shall we say, <laughs> enough for a discovery claim. I think it, it shows amazing dedication of, uh, for, uh, uh, by the, the young people involved with these colossal collaborations to, uh, you know, to, to persist in this, this way on, on what is, is really a very difficult, difficult task. Uh, I mean, uh, I congratulate them. <laughs> the story begins uh, with the work of um, uh, Nambu and Goldstone in 1960. I, I uh, asked myself, well, what would happen if we combined the Maxwell type of of field theory with some of these models which involved spontaneous symmetry breaking. So I simply put together uh, a model theory, a very simple one proposed by Goldstone in 1960, and uh, I, I married it to Ma Maxwell electrodynamics. And at that point, I, I, I saw in, in, the, in the equations of the theory that what happened was the, that the, what would otherwise have been the photon uh, w became a particle of spin one with mass. And the way it happened was that a photon has essentially two spin states, two polarization states, but a massive spin one particle needs three. The missing state is acquired from what were previously Goldstone bosons. So it, it all becomes uh, an acceptable kind of physical description. Uh, so then I, I wrote a short paper about that and I, uh, I sent it off to Physics Letters, uh, uh, whose editor was at CERN, and they rejected it. And uh, at that point I thought maybe, maybe the paper was too short and I hadn't said enough. The paper, the paper was about one side of A4. Uh, so I, I thought I'd better look at what were physical, more physical consequences of this kind of theory. And I pointed out in an, a revised version that there would always, in this cut kind of theory, be some uh, le leftover spin zero particles which did have mass. And these, these are what uh, became known as Higgs bosons. But there was nothing, nothing particularly new about that. It, it was just that I, I drew attention to them. But the same sort of excitations uh, uh, occur also in superconductors and uh, were actually uh, observed experimentally as long ago as 1980. Of course, I'm very happy uh, of that. The result now is really extremely impressive, and I am full of admiration of what CERN has realized. It certainly is important because it confirms, essentially, most of what has been done in physics, at least the physics which is not speculative and trying to understand things which, for the moment, we cannot verify, but for most of the physics which is uh, has been verified, uh, this is extremely important because it really is the stone that shows that everything is in place. Well, this is the culmination of a search which has been going on for some time now. It is uh, going to be an achievement, I trust, which results in the verification to a very high degree of accuracy, what we call the standard model. Uh, this missing scalar boson has been perplexing us for some time, and the fact that the data now seem to say that we're on the threshold of a major discovery is uh, incredibly gratifying and uh, exciting to be here, and gratifying because 
I've had the privilege of being associated with this. It is uh, very exciting and very commendable. It shows that the people who put this machine together did uh, an excellent job. And uh, uh, some of my colleagues have remarked about how amazingly trouble-free uh, this machine has been. And Well, it's really marvelous. It's very gratifying to realize that a idea and a theory that we worked on nearly 50 years ago has such huge uh, relevance to uh, actual physics. When we started working on this model, in fact, it, uh, much of the original work comes from my PhD thesis at, at Harvard, and in fact, that's when I started talking to Professor Hagen. And we, but when we started working on it, we had no idea that it would be more than an interesting model. But when we finally s solved it, uh, working with Professor Kibble, we knew that we had indeed done something that was very different and was very exciting, but we still didn't expect it to have anything to do with physical reality. It's very gratifying to know that model really was right. And it, it shows certainly to us the value of just imagining and just asking, just trying to follow the leads that you get from, from simple ideas, that it's worthwhile doing this and seeing where you come out. It really, it, it, it was really fun for us, and now we see that something really important has happened from those ideas. We developed that entire theory. Uh, we were amazed at the results. We were told that we were wrong. Uh, I was even told, I, I don't think Professor Hagen actually heard the conversation, but I was told by Heisenberg that I was wrong, which was pretty scary uh, for a young man who wanted to get a job. But, um, uh, in, but uh, we very carefully studied the theory. We were convinced when we published it that we had covered all possibilities of, of the, that we could, that we understood the theory being wrong. We had done many consistency checks and we were sure it was right.